Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Welcome everybody to the Daily Market Commentary. I will be your host for today, Charlie Fulkelson, and that is my co-host, Dad. Friday edition, we are going to look at the Aussie. The Aussie will be one of the markets we look at. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having an absolutely great day. We are going to kick it off uh, like we do each and every day, looking at the same 10 to 12 futures markets, identifying potential breakouts and reversals from an educational perspective. I'm joined by my fabulous, fabulous host, since I guess I'm the co-host. Me. Charlie. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So the S&P today, you know, I will say... Um, in my in in my brain, I was highly believing, especially when I look at the spiders, that we may have a bit of a reversal today, just based on the um, yesterday's candle, right? So looking at yesterday's candle, I had believed, you know what, there's a good opportunity for a bit of a reversal. But if you notice, now that level that I had had for a potential short out of here, we hit it, we dropped, we hit it again, we dropped. Um, you know, if we do break down from here, then I would have, you know, it would need to have a gap, right? Well, the ES in the overnight hours is not really paying attention. It's, uh, for some reason, it didn't read the, the, it didn't read my mind yesterday and it's doing, you know, whatever it wants to do. Imagine that. Um, and, and, the uh, mo- nothing can read your mind except for people really smart that's, like me. That's a good point. Well, but the market is bouncing off of this area here, and we've hit it once, twice. We're back up into it a third time. So if we think about it, what's that acting as, Charlie? The ceiling. And when price goes up through the ceiling, typically what happens? It's going to go until it runs into the? New ceiling. The new ceiling. That dotted one is like a crumpling ceiling. It does look like a crumbling ceiling. Very good point, Charlie. So when we think about these dotted lines, the dotted lines means it's lower probability. And so we're coming into what could be a level on the ES. And I've got to go way back in time to see the origin of that level. And as I go back on the hourly chart to see the origin of that level, what I'm seeing there is a little drop a little bit of basing and then another drop but in the middle of a big speed candle right and so we almost came up to there once if i go all the way back to the origin we almost came up to there twice and then a third time we came close to there and now we're coming close to there for a fourth time and we're basing before that level so that's why this is a this is a a dashed line level because the probabilities are a bit lower as we head into it now, um, we 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 could have another you know move up to that region if we get a little bit of a breakout above there. I'm not sure that we're going to get a great one, uh, and so as I go to a smaller time period, I got to go to a 15 minute chart. I would look at where is there a potential somewhere in in this in this area for a reversal, and I'm going to come right to this 2 a.m. level. Now this is. Um, in the midst of a bigger picture, kind of sideways, if you're thinking about the the hourly chart. Um, and so I'm looking at this area here, knowing that my stop would probably have to be below this pivot um, on a 15-minute level, right? So whenever whenever I have two lines together, Charlie, we call that the beginning of a mountain, right? Because price went right. up. And what do we do when price comes back to the beginning of a mountain? Who's going to take over? The bull. The bulls will take over, and the bulls will take over, so we would anticipate price could rally here because that's an area where demand was greater than supply. And that, and that you know, we know it was, it was in the state of equilibrium. Price rallied up. Um, now, we did get a little retest of that right here, um, but I think that we may get, you may get a, a good opportunity there. If that one goes through, which it's possible that it might, there's another demand area a bit lower down here on the hourly chart. And I like that area a lot. 
this little bit of these, this level on top of a level right in here, which was an old area of resistance. So if this 15 minute level breaks, I think there's plenty of room to trade it down into here if you want to uh, look for a day trade. Uh, I know we did an options on futures webinar this weekend. For those of you that are holding along over the weekend, uh, make sure that you have it hedged in some way. Uh, in the NASDAQ, very similar. Uh, there's nothing really for me to add to the commentary of the NASDAQ. It's a very similar price pattern. Uh, we are, you know, putting in a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a pattern that is one of my favorites to see. Uh, and those can break typically one way or the other. Um, but oftentimes that would be a good reversal point. Now, the crude oil. So crude oil came into our four-hour level. On our daily market commentary on Wednesday, we talked about the rally up to that level. And yesterday, we got a little move out of it and then came back in. And we're just not getting any semblance of move out of that level. So what we have to do is take that level off of our charts because we're there more than six candles. And I anticipate price will continue to rally a bit higher. Um, we, uh, we, we wrapped our lines around a potential reversal area if indeed we do get a drop because I think that's a really good spot um, for another long if indeed we get a drop. Um, gold. So in gold last night, we had, uh, during our live trade room, we had taken a look at, uh, a potential in gold above this, the, this, this area here, um, this 1300, um, we'd hit it, come back down into it and then rallied back up. So we hit our, we hit our hourly reversal point, uh, and then came back down to our 1300 and now continued to pop. And 1300 is a nice whole round number. Um, so when I'm looking at gold, I've got to consider uh, what's our what's our next opportunity, and it's going to be that you know we have a little bit of a level in here, but I've got to come all the way up to here to this drop base drop below that pivot high. Now in reality, I need to wrap my lines around that whole region, but I think there's a chance for price to make it all the way up to there uh, at some point over the course of the next few uh, few days. All right, so now let's go take a look at Charlie's Aussie. Let's take a look at the Aussie, since that's Finally, what you wanted to you look at. you should have done it the first time. Okay, so looking at the Aussie, we see that we had identified after this. Now, this is, the, this is our, uh, our gap up on the uh, switch into the M contract. Right, we'd had the we'd had the gap up after switching to that M contract, uh, and looking at this on a smaller time period, the anticipation was that we could get a little fifteen minute reversal level off of here. So yesterday in the live trading room, we looked at this as a as a little tiny trade on the fifteen minute level. We got a little move away from it. Price came in base 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 base. Um, and, and then didn't really make much of a movement. So if you're using your six candle rule, which we've got our six candle rule, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It was 10 candles before price would have come up to our, our hourly level. Now, once we got to our hourly level, uh, we can see that we had basing before the hourly level. So this, this, the, both of these levels gave us plenty of reason to, to think ahead of time that it had a fair amount of weakness associated with it, right? Now, this is obviously a, uh, a gap simply on the, on the uh, contract rollover, um, but we need to maintain that that could be an area where we see price trade now down to this area in here as a potential for a long if indeed price can make it down to that region. Our, our highs are, are getting, you know, this, these highs here uh, are getting a little bit closer together and our pullbacks are getting a bit deeper. So it'd be interesting to see if we do get even a deeper pullback this time around. Um, I was looking for a potential short, but we didn't get the short on the last, uh, on the last go around. In the euro, so price came into our level on the euro and then moved away from it. And yesterday we said that if it comes back, we convert that to a confirmation style entry. Uh, and then on the contract rollover, we got a very strong gap higher. So I need to uh, remove all of those areas. Go take a look at the four hour. Um, and I see that I've got some levels up in here that could be decent reversals, but my big picture is telling me more to be a buyer, right? And so I need to look at the actual contract specific 
right? To see where my level might be, because that's a really big rollover gap. You don't normally get gaps quite that big on rollover. Um, so I do need to pay attention to, you know, what are some areas that I can see when I move over to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, to these contract specific here. Now you'll notice that over here on the left, you're gonna have a fair amount of gaps, right? Um, so those gaps are still there. Um, when I, when I look at this and that's, that's really what, what, you know, because that's where there wasn't any volume on that, right? Once the volume shift occurred, uh, then you start to see these levels that really, they, they really may mean something. So I'm still going to have to use, uh, our prior contract as really the, the one where I'm going to identify my level. So I'm still leaning on the March contract to give me my levels. However, um, my big picture is telling me, listen, I should probably be a buyer, even though we're chopping around in here at the moment. Um, I'm just going to leave it be today to allow it to, to collect some, some spots, right? Canadian dollar as well. Um, the Canadian dollar, we do have a couple of levels up above here, but we're nowhere near those for us to even take a look at at this time. Looking next at the Great British Pound and the Japanese Yen. So looking at the pound, um, we had the, the delay of the Brexit vote. Uh, the delay of the Brexit vote gave us, uh, gave us uh, some stability in the pound, hopefully, for a little bit of time. Um, my thought was is that, is that this thing would pin itself a bit higher as we started to head into the end of the month. Uh, but now we'll see exactly what it, uh, what it does after that vote. We are in a bigger picture upward trend with an opportunity for a potential breakout to the upside. So that, uh, that is a very, uh, a very realistic and potential play. And then the Japanese yen, uh, also we came up above this level uh, that we have identified. But if I move this to the June contract, um, we'll see that, 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 that there is still an area up in here where we may see a price reversal. So we'll keep that level kind of uh, intact at the moment. So I'm going to turn this thing off for the weekend. I hope you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Uh, take a look at some of those levels. Hopefully they uh, they fit into your trading style. If you've got questions, please send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I will see you all real soon. Later.